Hi guys, Sajjad Hussain again with a new video. In this video, I am going to check the design of a column. I am taking this example from PCA notes on ACI 31808 as you can see. So let's go to the problem first. Here is the problem. This is example 11.1. Cylinderness effects for column in a non-sway frame. So here is a non-sway frame. What does it mean? Let's see the plan and elevation. It will be very clear. The problem says that design columns A3 and C3 and the first story of the 10 story of his building shown below. The clear height of the first story is 21.4 feet and 11.4 feet for all the other stories. Assume that the lateral load effect on the building are caused by wind and that the dead loads are only the sustained loads. Other pertinent design data for the building are as follows. Concrete as usual F C is 4000 psi. For column and walls, F dash C will be 6000 psi. And reinforcement will be 60,000 ks, 60 ksi. The beams are 24 by 20. Exterior columns are 20 inch by 20 inch. Interior columns are 24 by 24. Shear wall is 20. No, sorry, 12 inch. The thickness of slab is not given, rather the weight of the floor joist is given that is 86 pound per square foot and here is the joist shown. So it's not a simple slab, rather it consists of joist. So what we will do, we will model this as an area element with zero mass and we will assign this load to the element. Superimposed dead load is 32 pound per square foot. Roof life load is 30 pound per square foot. Floor life load is 50 pound per square foot. Wind load computed according to ASC7. But unfortunately, the wind velocity is not given over here. But when we go to the result table here, we can see that the wind has a very small value. So for the time being, we can ignore the wind. And let us try to design the, these columns, A3 and C3. The building plan is like this. There are two shear walls per mutually perpendicular like this. So altogether, there are four shear walls. They are mutually perpendicular. perpendicular. That's why the, this bu building is treated as a non-sway frame. So let's try to model this and let us see how it is calculated in SEP 2000. So let us start, let us put these two software parallel to each other. so that it will be easy for us to model. Let's see, let's model first the geometry. The plan shows 28 feet, 28 feet by 28 feet. There are five bays in X and there are five bays in Y and the height is 13 feet center to center and the first floor height is 23 feet. So let's model first this one. What we will do, we'll go to file a new model and here our unit will be keep fit and we will select a 3D frame system 
In this 3D frame system, we have several choices like open frame building, parameter frame building, beam slab building, and flat slab building. So our building is very close to the beam slab building. So we take this as beam slab building. Number of stories are 10. A story height on the average is 13. Number of bays along X is 5. Width per bay is 28. Number of bays along Y is again 5 and same 28. Number of division X is 4. Number of division Y is 4. This is the division for the, for the slab. And now we have to, to fine tune for the height of the first um, level, first story, which is uh, first floor rather. So that is 23 feet. So let us customize this. The spacing is all fine. Only the spacing for the first one, first story is 23 feet. Okay. Now, we know that the beams are also given. Beams are 24 inch by 20 inch. So, let us define beam. Add new property. Concrete. Rectangular. The name of this section will be beams. Sorry, let's use the capital letter. Beams. The material is 4000 psi for the beam is okay. So we will leave 4000 psi. Let's see 4000 psi. But the bars are not here. So let's add a quick material let's add rebar rebar is 60 ksi let's add the 60 ksi rebar material is team is 615 okay now depth of the beam is 2 feet and width of the beam is 20 inch so we can write 20 inch over here Reinforcement, this should be treated as beam. Longitudinal bar, this should be ASTM A615 grade 60. Confinement bar, the stirrup should also be 615. Okay. And the top cover, bottom cover, that is okay. Fine. So, this is how we have defined the beams for column okay columns we have to define the section for the column there are two sections for the column let us first define the interior column and then we will revise to exterior or vice versa let us define the exterior column 20 inch by 20 inch, and then we will revise the interior column by 24 by 24 so let's add the column interior the section properties at new one let us say these are column exterior now concrete is 6000 psi Okay, so here we have 6000 psi concrete. So our concrete here will be 6000 psi. Fine. The column size, exterior column is 20 by 20 inch. So these are 20 inch. 
by 20 inch let's see the reinforcement the reinforcement should be a615 a615 this is the column it's the rectangular column bars are uh, stirrups are tied stirrups let's uh, this be number 7 number 4 or number 3 should be good enough okay Let's uh, define the walls. Add new section. Let's say these are wall. So the material should be six thousand psi. The shear wall thickness is 12 inch, 1 feet, that's fine. Okay, so here we have defined the beams, exterior column and wall. Restraints are there, fine. So here is the building. First. Let us change the support conditions, all these supports, restraints are fixed. Let us save this file. So this is example 11.1. Now what we have to do? We have to define interior columns also and we have to define shear wall, slabs, okay. For slab as I said we will take a, an area with the or area element with the, its uh, density as zero. So let us define a material. We will use 4000 psi. Add copy of this material. We will call slab material. Here we will put the density as 0. Fine. Okay. Fine. So let us define slab first. Define section properties, area, new, let's say slab. The thickness of slab, let it be 8 inch. For bending also, 8 inch. The material, it should be slab material, okay, okay, so we can add slab now,
let's show this in both the windows. So slabs are defined, we can go up and we can check all these slabs are defined. So we can revise, select all, let's assign this on our slab okay so let's have a look yeah these are all slabs correct So all are slab. Now we have to define the wall. Let us define wall. Let us take one elevation. The walls are not on this plane, rather they are on this plane. Let's select wall. So walls are here. And after that, these are here. Save also so that then walls are here and walls are here. Let's perpendicular to this one, not on this plane, we will go one inside. So again the walls are here, the walls are here, then again the walls are here and the walls are here. So now you can see the walls are here, let us save this model. Okay, so, so far what we have done, we have defined the concrete, we have the defined the concrete for the walls, we have defined the beams, columns, walls and now we have to add the loads. The loads are the floor joist load is 86 pound per square foot. So what we will define the, the, let's define the load pattern first. Load pattern, we have the dead load, yes. Then we have superimposed dead load.
then we have live load then we have roof so let's add the roof load on purpose we are not adding mid load now we will add uh, maybe in the next uh, in the next video because wind load needs a totally different uh, video and it, it will take time so let's for the time being let's uh, stick to the, to the vertical loads only for later load I will develop another model uh, another video now let's assign the the weight let's assign the first let us select the slabs so all these slabs are selected now so we are going to assign area load uniform area load it is in dead load the units are 86 pound per square foot so let's correct this unit over here pound per square foot load is 86 pound per square foot direction is gravity so let us add this load or replace the existing there is no existing it's the same thing So this load you can see over here, this load is added. Now superimposed dead load is also there. Previous selection, so it's easy. Assign area load, uniform. Now this time we are defining superimposed dead load and this superimposed dead load is thirty two pound per square feet so I change the unit to pound and feet and now I'm defining thirty two pound per square feet let's save this model now we have to define floor load and then roof so let us define first the floor load again go to previous selection uh, it's this time I'm using a truck sorry here it will be 3d uh, here so let's select the roof and unselect all so for floor load we can assign area load uniform shell and this time live load units are pound feet so this is 50 pound per square feet okay and then I can select this portion and I can say assign this is the roof load area load uniform now this time I'm talking about roof load pound foot roof load is 30 okay so here we have defined all the loads let us define the load combinations Let's add the default load combination for concrete design. 
okay if we want to have a look we can have a look define load combination Okay. Okay, that's fine. I can add one more. That is dead is one point four and superimpose dead is also one point four. Okay. Let's save. We can analyze. For model, do not run. Rest is okay. Now we want to go to design. Design code is ACI 31808. Seismic design category A. I'm not designing a D category structure now. Then combinations, add. Okay, then let us design. So let's see the columns. So this is the column. A summary says that I select a pinch FY is sixty, FC is six, fine. Rebar area is almost four. So this we have designed our rebar area is almost four square inch. Let us see what is there. Flexural design. Let's go to okay, pinch. Rebar is four is four inch. The area of rebar comes out to be one person. That means it looks minimum, which is very normal. For shear design. Theoretically, no rebar needed, but we can provide nominal rebars.
we can see interaction diagram this is the interaction diagram okay let's see what is the result over here Let's see like this, it will be more clear. Here it says that assume 16 numbers, 7 bars and 3 ties as per this figure. So they are providing almost 1.7 percent which is on the higher side and we can see it's not needed that much. So here it is confirmed that our calculation is okay. Maybe if we added the, the wind load so the rebar maybe I'm not pretty sure maybe the, the, the rebar ratio may increase or may not I'm not sure. But this is how we, we design the concrete structure in SEP 2000. We could design the beams and slabs all, it's already designed, we can check. But since this is not the topic over here, so let me conclude my, my video over here. We saw that the rebar check by SAP is in well agreement with the manual calculation and we can say that uh, SAP 2000 we can easily use for the design of concrete structure. So hopefully you will like my video. I request you to, to, to subscribe my channel. Thank you very much. Bye.